beauty of, you know, you create a moment and then that becomes like the sample from the record you sample. But that's the moment you create it. And then you chop that moment up and pitch it and take it somewhere else and that inspires another moment. And that second moment could never have happened if the first moment had not have happened. So I, I love that process of kind of linear, explorative creativity. Thank you. There was a question down here. Is there something that quantizes your stuff? Yeah, on, that's on, on or off, depending on the feel. Especially with the like super dance floor shit, I want it super tight. And also when it's with the live band, I love that, that contradiction. Yeah, like loose and strong. And different drummers I work with, it's kind of fun how they, how they affect super quantized time. And then with a lot of down tempo stuff, I like the quantized off, and I, I love the looseness. So it's, yeah. It's, it's, it depends on the use case. Yeah. I just want to add something that maybe people didn't understand. When you start playing the road, they didn't know where the starting point is and whatever. But you actually have a secret. You have the click in your ear. Oh, yeah. Sorry. There's a click as well. So that, that probably helps explain things. my next question. Yeah, so I mean, it's for, it's for two, two reasons. What with any is? I used to always have floor wedges, but to program live, I needed them so loud or really close and loud, and I just wasn't looking after my ears. And then also, when I'm playing with a band, if I have a singer and my monitor is like 200 decibels, that singer hates me. Right? So it's just a nature of practicality and protecting my ears, which, I mean, I'm going to sound like a super old man now, but please look after your ears. You only have one pair of them. I mean, <laughs> it's so important. Yeah, of course. I'm going to have to share the questions around the room soon, but please. Yeah. 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 And sorry, some so you mean Yeah. 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 Is that happening sometimes drop? Is that the same question? I'm, I'm, I like how you guys are helping each other. I like that. So, are you saying what does that happen, or, or or that does happen, or you mean the first note? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is good practice actually, because I mean, for me, I, I love quantize for the aesthetic that it creates, because I enjoy playing an acoustic piano. There's no quantize on that, but I love the aesthetic of that real tight shit sometimes. However, in the case of what you're talking about. And I think maybe everyone understands already, and I'm just slow, but what the question is, is especially when you're on a loop, and as the time, hang on, you're over there, so this way, as the time goes this way, and it loops back around, if you want to play a bass note at the start of the loop, but you're a little bit early, even one billionth of a second early, which is MIDI, so if you're 190 seconds of a beat early, then it won't record on beat one. It won't be there. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. Cool. So this is actually a really interesting thing to practice. Because... No, because the other thing is, if you learn to play after the beat, then it will never happen. And it's an interesting thing, because I've been talking to someone about this recently with programming and stuff, and all the great drum feels and bass feels and any instrument, but drums and bass is more obvious. Sometimes the shit just feels really good. But if you write out what the drummer's playing or analyze it, it might just be a standard rock beat. It's like, well, why does it feel so good? And it's because certain notes are pushing, they're like early in the beat, or they're, or they're late, they're lazy, they're late after the beat. And it's that give or take which gives music its funk and its feel. And so it's really cool to apply that to an electronic context. And also to take it back to your question is, 
if you if you know that there's a risk of that, so you're like, okay, so the, the first bass note at the start of the loop, I'm gonna play it behind the beat. I don't mean a 16th or a 30 second later, I mean like a, probably a, a 128th later. But this can be, this, this is a skill which can be practiced and it's an amazing skill to develop. It really opens up the whole possibility of what can be done with something, if you're like, it just, it doesn't feel right. Like I'm sure some of you would have done some shit where you, you program a beat and then you might just slide the, the snares over a little bit or sl slide something over a little bit. So I'm talking about the idea of practicing that so you can do that consciously. Yeah. Yeah, a question from the other side of the room. <laughs>